Okay, so sorry for the um, delay. My name is Julian, and this is Goran. We are both from the university, like the Friedrich Alexander University in Erlangen, Nuremberg, and we are both working at the chair of accounting and auditing. Today, the topic is ESP supply chain knowledge graph. Um, that's what we are like probably doing most of the time, researching on supply chain knowledge graphs and see the connection between ESG and supply chains. Like I already said, my name is Julian, this is Goran, and, and to give you a little bit of overview of what we are doing, um, it's all for us about data governance in the beginning. We live in a digital world that everyone has a digital life. Um, there's various reasons to look at um, sustainability, sustainable development goals, and ESG related topics, even when you're working in accounting and auditing. Probably most of you know the Sustainable Development Goals, the founders of the United Nations. It was established in 2015. There's 17 goals, and we want to have a look in detail um, some of them. This is kind of the beginning for us. We have a new European legislation. It's not all. It's not passed yet, but um, companies are working on that. And it's all about the supply chain and the due diligence, uh, due diligence requirements in the supply chain. Um, you can see for businesses, legal certainty and the level of playing field is very, very important for consumers and investors. More transparency would be ideal. And for us as researchers, it would be nice to have a lot more transparency on the supply chain, but also in terms of the um, quality of the data. So what are we doing? We are working on the supplier lists of Adidas, Nike, and H&M. Those three companies have already published their supplier lists online. You can download them directly. They have a lot of information available for um, everyone, which is not only the name of the supplier, but also like what kind of supplier, the address, some of them even publish the owner or, for example, the telephone number. So it would be nice to, you can already call them and see if this company is already like, if it's a real company or not, where is it, where is it located and stuff like that. And if you have all those information about the supply chain, you can dig deeper and ask yourself some questions. For example, like, um, are the company suppliers well distributed? We've had a lot of political issues and also like environmental issues. So it would be nice to see, okay, where are the suppliers of the companies? Are any of the su companies suppliers listed in European Union sanctions countries? Are any of the company suppliers located in worst workers' rights countries? But it's not only about workers' rights, it's also about child labor and for example, environmental issues. That's what we want to look at. And that's why we use knowledge graphs because we want to know how can we connect data that we have and that we can find to see if the supply chain is good or bad in terms of ESG. Okay, like I already said, uh, said we had a look at Adidas, Nike and H&M. You can directly find the links here. You can download the data and like we cover what we are doing. To get a better overview of the suppliers, you, we, we just quickly put it into Google Maps and wanted to see, okay, where are the suppliers located? You can see, for example, here for Adidas, it's pretty much around the world. Every um, part is, um, you can find here every part of the, of the world and you can compare that to Nike. This is pretty equal, but for example, if we have a look at H&M, you can see that the whole continent of America is not really um, a supplier, like there's one supplier in the United States, but not at all, like for example, here in Brazil, Argentina, there are no suppliers. Yeah, that's particularly interesting um, for H&M since they got no suppliers in North America and South America, um, we can see from coming from China uh, through the Suez Canal, 
um, HMM would be uh, um, way more volatile than, for example, Nike and Adidas. Um, these are also uh, interesting points. Very quite sim simple um, uh, by itself, but um, considering from a from an uh, economic standpoint, um, those are things like also prices uh, like COVID or uh, Ukraine, for example. So those are points that have to be like tracked live and considered when um, thinking about supply chain resilience, for example. Okay. Now we get our hands dirty. You can see, okay, we have the Adidas supplier list. We put everything into Neo4j. You can see three different colors. Those are the three different kind of suppliers Adidas publishes. And if we see on the next slide, you can see, okay, this is pretty much unstructured. You can see a lot of like companies, regions, um, um, countries, whatever you can find. And we want to make that structured. So we um, want to use some use cases, for example, tax paradises. Here you can see a list of uh, European Union's blacklisted tax havens, plus those upgraded to the gray list. Okay, and we wanted to see are some of the um, suppliers from Adidas, H&M and Nike um, in those countries. Are they, uh, are they active though, they're there? This is the graph we get. Um, if you look for the suppliers and match it with data, open available data, you can find in the internet um, about tax havens, tax paradises and blacklisted um, countries. This is pretty huge. Um, and you cannot get, a, um, cannot get a lot of information out of it. That's why we want to have a closer look. For example, here you can see Nike on the left and H&M on the right. And you can see that H&M has far more connections to those countries who are like tax haven, tax paradises or blacklisted by the European Union. And this is interesting. And that's a point, like a starting point where we want to dig deeper inside the topic. Another example is, for example, if you want, like we already said, um, worst countries for workers' rights or worst countries for child labor, you can, hear some, you can see here some examples. You can see Nike, H&M again. H&M has, again, a lot more connections. And that's the starting point where we want to go really into Neo4j. Yes. Um... Of course, the time is quite limited, so we considered um, all the big process query. Um, this time we are looking at the child labor and uh, workers' rights, partially of Nike, H&M, and uh, Adidas. Um, for instance, uh, here um, it is as I said, a smaller query. We used uh, GraphXR because we had 79,000 entities. And uh, for this laptop, it's a little too much to process. Um, also considering that sometimes double entities are created. So, um, well, let's look at the graph. For instance, what happens? Um, I mean, this extension is very interesting in itself. Um, when we uh, look at single entities, um, we can see here Okay, um, the commerce of Adidas and H&M are quite active in um, India. Um, this is to be expected. I mean, Nike is also um, active there. Uh, what about this one? Um, this is well, that's an example of an entity, but um, the main entity is Pakistan, um, which is interesting because uh, Pakistan in itself, um, we talked about like tracking news and everything, and um, for example, weather data, and we know that uh, Pakistan has been uh, well, a victim of many floodings in recent times. So um, we could expect, like the West Adidas, being more well, aware of that and thinking about supply chain resilience. Um, I mean, um, or that happens a lot, right? Um, this is a simple query, very simple. Um, let's say we just want to look at Nike um, of the processing it takes. Um, let's have a look. This is quite 
fast. And uh, here we see it's way smaller than um, those of H&M, um, only in two uh, blacklisted child labor countries. Um, let's see, for example, here uh, we got, well, India, that, that was the one we already saw. And I think for the workers' rights, um, which one would be interesting? Let's take the one up here. Um, Guatemala, I think uh, the other countries are not active in Guatemala as far as uh, easily queried. But uh, in itself, um, we can see um, using knowledge graph, this is also a very simple, simplistic approach. I mean, we can't compare two companies and their power. But um, here we can see that we can use knowledge graph to increase supply chain resilience majorly. And um, coming back to the presentation uh, here, right? Um, yeah, this is the image we saw, like this is where we digged into it. And this is just a starting point. Like we want really to create um, a knowledge graph as big as possible to have a look at several data points at several um, clear points. We want to uh, several points. We want to make clear. We want to see okay how are the working conditions? How can we find better information, public available information? Because you can like search for a lot of ESG ratings, but the problem is we don't know where the data comes from. In terms of research, we have to trust on the ratings. But we can also say, okay, we want to make our own rating because we can see, okay, we can find information about, for example, um, floods, like um, environmental issues, about um, the suppliers itself, because we can now say, okay, we know the suppliers and not only the countries they are in, and we can search in the internet for the suppliers. Like, where is the address? Is it close to uh, um, a school, for example? Is the company helping the, the workers to improve life. And that's something we can maybe see by adding like as much information and as much data we can find on the internet to our knowledge graph. Whoever is Hi, willing uh, to... Uh, sorry? Dr. Julian, sorry for interrupting. We are running out of time. You need to wrap up. Okay. Um, like this is a quickly sum up of the points we found out in the knowledge graph right now. This is us feel free to, to um, call us, to, to text us on LinkedIn, email, or whatever you can find. And this is the data we already have. And if you, like all of the audience, have some information, data, whatever they want to share, just let us know. We can put it into the knowledge graph, and we are willing to share the knowledge graph with you as well. So thank you, Sid, for keeping us on track. And excuse us for our connectivity issues. No worries. That's all good. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dr. Julian. We have uh, two or three minutes, so we can take in one or two quick questions. So uh, there's a question. Do you think OTAs can benefit from knowledge graphs? Can we switch back from the presentation mode to the... Yeah, you need to just switch to the stream yard. So the question is, do you think OTAs can benefit from knowledge graphs? Um, uh, we are not uh, sure what OTA means. Uh, excuse us for not knowing. Uh, English is not our primary language. Uh, what's meant by OTA? All right. No worries. I think that's about it. Uh, I don't have any more questions in the, in the chat. Sorry, you. Dimas, for that. We will Google that and just uh, <laughs> let us know what OTS is, and um, we can answer the question. Definitely. The chat, so the chat is open, so feel free to drop into the chat window. And yeah, and we look forward to having you the next year as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care.